<laughs> this meeting is being recorded. So shall I start? Or do you? No, you, no, I, oh, I yeah. want to introduce you. Uh, yeah, please do. Please yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. I will introduce you properly. Okay, dokes. So welcome. Uh, today we have uh, we have as a guest um, uh, Christopher Mean, Christ for friends. Um, uh, he's an information specialist at the uh, Galway University in Ireland, and he has done a lot of uh, OER projects, and uh, he's a, a proud member of our annual uh, group. So the floor is yours. Uh, we are um, very happy to have you, and uh, we are very curious about your uh, OER uh, projects. Uh, thanks very much, Monique. Um, if I could just, um, I'm just going to try. Oh, I, there we go. I've got the uh, share screen enabled. Thanks so much. Um, so, uh, can everybody see that then? I hope so. Let me know if if there's any problems. Um, so thanks very much. I'm uh, yeah. I'm Chris Mean from. Uh, 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 we're called the University of Galway now. Uh, we just uh, rebranded. So uh, so um, uh, yeah, we were the National University of Galway. Now we're the University of Galway. Um, and it's a pleasure to be here. And also, I, I I haven't extended my congratulations yet to everyone on the uh, Open Collaboration Award there from uh, uh, from the OE Global. So that's 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 really uh, that's really uh, fantastic. And also that Open Resili Resilience award is really incredible um uh so um yeah i mean i've been working so i i've been working on a oer a good bit in the last especially in the last 18 months and um and there's sort of three aspects i guess of the work that i've been doing uh and the, the main one here locally has been the um has been the an oer pilot project uh on which I'm, I'm I'm a member of the project team, uh, and uh, so my role has been in uh, primarily creating OER learning supports, um, community development of of OER early adopters, um, and workflow creation for a, a prospective um, OER service, uh, and then I somehow got embroiled in some policy discussions, mostly by accident. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I've also been uh, busy with with, with the Spark uh, NOL, uh, which has been just super fabulous. Um, working on the OE Champions uh, project, um, the uh, a learning path, um, a little bit on these OE drops, and now I'm here. I am doing a practitioner in the spotlight, which I'm. I'm very excited about and then as well um last year i completed the spark north america a leadership program this is sort of tied into the the pilot project that we're running at uh, nui galway um, so i'll just touch on on that a little bit uh, but mostly i'll be focusing on on the stuff i've been doing at um nui galway come university of galway um so, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I suppose I'm not really an OER like librarian, uh, technically speaking, or, 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 or formally speaking, I guess. Uh, my, my job title is uh, Assistant Librarian of Academic Skills uh, here at the uh, University of Galway Library. And uh, what do I do? I'm an, I'm an information literacy guy, uh, basically. Uh, I, do, I do training for uh, undergraduates and top postgraduate students. Um, I, I do this, uh, so this is, you know, things like database training, um, you know, books, journals, uh, citing and referencing, this kind of thing. Um, I do face-to-face -face training. I do uh, training via, you know, the internet, uh, as we've all done more of these last couple of years. Um, and I'm the team leader for a queries hub uh, here, uh, here, here in our facility. Um, so, so, you know, so OER isn't a for, or open education isn't a, a, a formal part of my, of my, uh, my, my, my job description, um, but I've been very fortunate. This is something that's been of interest to me for quite some time. So um, I've been very fortunate to be able to um, to be working in this space uh, the last uh, the last couple of years. Um, and I, I sort of I, I had 
quite a few sort of close encounters with open education over 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 many years. And the more I think about it, the you know the, the further back I go, and I decide out oh, well, actually that thing I did back in most recently 2002, I decided I did something back then was actually what that actually was was open education. But what really um, made me sort of focus in a little bit more on it and understand it better uh, is a, uh, a a module that I took here at uh, at, uh, at Galway uh, from our uh, Center for Excellence in Learning and Technology uh, in 2016 called Teaching with Technology. Uh, and it was run that year by uh, Sharon Flynn. Uh, she was the lecturer for that. And um, and that one included some really you know great seminars on open educational resources. And um, in doing that seminar, I did a capstone um, project, which was a kind of a uh, an analysis, I suppose, or a critique of an open resource that the library had created and published uh, back in the aughts. Uh, and I called it uh, Lark Online, or uh, Learning and Research Know How Online. And it was a uh, uh, it was a, a, a self directed interactive uh, tutorial built built with uh, uh, Articulate and um, it was I've been published in Flash, and so um, once I understood a little bit more, you know, about the open licenses and and you know the five R's and what that all meant, uh, I was able to look at it and say, well, this is an amazing resource. Uh, it's 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 uh, you know it's 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 freely available for people to use on on the internet, um, but uh, there wasn't an open license applied uh, to it. So I said, oh, that would that might make it. Uh, you know, sort of more open uh, if that were to happen. And then as well, um, not really editable uh, due to the, the, the software that uh, um, had been used to create it. And then um, it had been published in Flash, which actually made it really um, hard to do much with. You couldn't even actually you know, sort of cut and paste the text uh, um, because of, of the way it had been published. So, so um, and that was despite the fact it was based on, on something called Tilt, which was a, a, an interactive tutorial from the University of, of Texas that had been published in the early 2000s that had a kind of a, a prototypical open license to it. So, so anyway, so that this sort of focused my attention on OER. Um, and um, so I started to think, but just in my own sort of work uh, as an intern, as an IL practitioner, you know, what can I, what can I do to sort of I don't know, promote uh, open education. So um, I did what, uh, you know, librarians do, created an OER uh, libguide. Um, and uh, I started using IL related uh, OER to create sort of localized um, IL resources. Uh, and then I, you know, continued learning myself about uh, repositories and licenses. And um, Eventually, I became sort of more, um, you know, as I became more comfortable with the material, I started to talk to other uh, pract or other uh, librarian professionals about about OER, uh, just to just to tell them about it. Um, so, for example, at the local Open Access Week in October 2019, uh, and then a Library Association of Ireland Open Cafe. It was a World Cafe uh, rather than an Open Cafe uh, or World Cafe. There's a few. There's a few variations of the cafe out there um, on open scholarship in spring 2019. And um, just as I was reflecting on this slide, I, I realized that sort of just before that, uh, Galway hosted um, OER 19, uh, which is put on by the uh, Association for Learning Technology. And uh, this was co-chaired by, by Catherine Cronin uh, that year and brought to Galway. Uh, and I think that 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 Got the attention of some of the senior managers at the library, uh, and uh, who who I think sort of encouraged me then to to to, to do more with with open education. Um, so we we've been really fortunate here to have um, you know folks like Catherine, folks like Sharon Flynn, folks like Ian McLaren, um, um, you know, working in this space for for a good long time and bringing these kinds of events here. Um, at around this time as well, we, we hired an open scholarship uh, librarian, and um, this is part of, 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 you know, a renewed attention to the open space on the part of the library, and uh, his name was Hardy Schwam, and, and um, I wasn't re really privy to the discussions that went into the creation of these, uh, of his, uh, what wound up being the, the eight pillars of open scholarship that are being used uh, here at, at Galway, but one of the pillars uh, that wound up being included uh, through those discussions was one on, on open education. So, um, 
and Hardy, you know, really, uh, he one of the things, one of the main things that he was doing was was uh, starting an open scholarship community on on uh, at at Galway, and uh, so he had sort of he ran sort of events, uh, including those related to open education, uh, which. Um, were really useful in terms of surfacing uh, people who are interested in that particular space. So whether they were lecturers, um, uh, but also but also student leaders, for example. And um, and eventually, we actually organized an event. And this was sort of like this was kind of a key one. Um, and I, I apologize for this terrible slide. I, I, we, I've lost track of the slide deck, so we just have I have this screenshot of the video. But um, um, you know, this was an important one. Just you know. Like, you know in terms of uh, the people who were involved. Um, so we had uh, two folks from the Anyway Galway Students Union uh, come and talk at this at this event. Uh, and so they were really, really excited about um, open open uh, textbooks in particular. And um, so, and this was the, uh, Cameron was the student union uh, president and then Scott was the executive for education, I believe. And uh, so they came in and gave a very sort of articulate uh, talk on, on um, on why they, you know, why they were interested in, in open education. So, uh, you know, so in this one place we had on the one hand student leaders, on the other hand we had uh, a student, uh, a faculty champion in uh, Neil Madden, who was already using an open textbook as well, uh, and he was, you know, one of a number of people who had sort of again surfaced through these sort of conversations going on in the open scholarship community. Um, and there was me uh, as part of the library, and I was part of a kind of a, a growing group of people who were sort of interested in this space as well. And um, and I think importantly, it, it, it this was something that went across um, the t research and learning units as well as the digital publishing units. So bringing a kind of knowledge and, and interest in in pedagogy and teaching with uh, sort of some really good sort of digital expertise. Um, so, so you know, these sorts of people coming together all at the same time in the same space and having this conversation was, a, you know, a really sort of a, a catalytic kind of a thing. And especially, um, you notice the date down there was 20 April 2020. So this was an event that we had been in the middle of organizing uh, just as the pandemic hit. But um, and it did hit. We we put it off. But then we decided to do it online. And there was a great deal of attention to sort of you know online teaching at that point, obviously. Um, uh, but then at the same time, uh, commercial publishers also sort of uh, inviting uh, everybody in and, and offering their 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 stuff uh, temporarily for free. But so, you know, lots of thoughts around just access, you know, remote learning, digital learning, uh, and all kinds of stuff happening just as these people were coming together uh, to talk about things. So. Um, just just a little bit more on the student leadership because this has been a really big part of, of what wind up being the pilot project. Um, so so Cameron and and uh, I think was there on on our initial pilot uh, uh, project team. Um, and we've always had the uh, the student union VP for for education on it and um, and it's been a really, really, uh, really, really important. Um, and uh, but this is our, our latest guy. His name is Joe Me, and uh, this was his can. This is one of his campaign posters. You can see that open educational resources were very uh, features very prominently in his in, in his campaign. And I like to, to think that had something to do with the sort of the, the our ongoing engagement with the student leaders in this in this space. And he eventually did get elected, and he's been an absolute force in terms of uh, of uh, really promoting uh, OER. So, anyways, back to 2020. Um, with all those people there uh, and um, uh, in place and, you know, interest in the library very strong at that point, we were starting to all sort of think about how, well, how can libraries support uh, OER? Uh, and another factor being the, uh, the, the, you know, some of the strategic um, uh, outlooks or, or documentation that was in place or had just been put in place in that time. So on the one hand, the, the library strategic plan of uh, 2021 to 2025, uh, where open education resources were noted in, in four different places in that document. And then um, anyway, Galway strategy itself, um, which which was uh, 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 focused on five values, and one of them was an open value with a flagship goal uh, that talks specifically about the use and production of open educational resources. And then of course, that that sort of backdrop of the UNESCO recommendation there as well. Um, so all that you know, so the sort of strategic stuff coming from the top, um, grassroots interest coming from the bottom, including from the library, and we we put it all together and. Um, and uh, put in for some money, uh, basically. So, um, 
So we applied for a student project fund grant uh, and decided we weren't too sure what to do. Uh, I just decided to go for you know something that seemed to make sense based on some models that we'd seen uh, uh, in North America, but as well as as, as Europe, uh, and just went ahead with, with some things. Um, and we decided to go with a small grant competition uh, to fund some some OER creation. Uh, or it didn't have to be OER creation. Uh, we we were we were open to uh, adoption uh, as well as sort of light remixing projects, but they all wound up being sort of creation projects. Um, we decided to try out a Pressbook subscription. So that was a part of it. So that would be our, our, our both as a sort of a creation platform as well as a, 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 kind of a, a kind of a repository, I suppose. Um, and then some capacity development funds as well to uh, increase the, the skill set of, of you know, people from the library, for example, but we were open to, to, to suggestions on, on, on how that got, got uh, allocated. Um, so this, this wound up being sort of the plan for what we, what we went in ahead and, and tried to do. Um, so uh, just an overview of how that went now. Um, so the project startup, there was the fund application, we got the funds, um, decided on a platform, uh, had information events for staff and students, and then uh, there were ultimately 10 successful projects selected to receive small grants, um, and then uh, support for those, and so on and so forth. Now, unfortunately, a, a, a sort of a big black hole in this whole project uh, came about last uh, autumn uh, in the form of a cyber attack, which knocked the internet, uh, knocked the university off the internet for a period of several weeks. Um, and so if you think of each of these projects with, 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 with each of them with its own sort of little timeline, uh, well, not little timeline necessarily, uh, it really, really had a, a big impact on things. Um, so, um, so that that was not great, but we, you know, we and they uh, sort of plowed ahead um, as best as we could. Uh, so we designed what we called Open Press at NUI Galway using uh, Pressbooks powered, um, uh, you know, lots of, lots of, you know, useful things to Pressbooks. I think that I could, that I can talk about a little bit more in detail later on. Um, we just thought it'd be really uh, handy to have a, a, a kind of a core piece of software that people could use and one that sort of creates books. Um, so, so that's what we, we decided on. And this is one of the books that came out pretty quickly from Eileen Kennedy, who's a member of the project team for a course that she taught in uh, called Designing the Digital World. Uh, and this one uh, was a, a remix of various uh, sources um, and then some sort of, sort, of, sort of open pedagogical stuff that she, uh, she her students put together uh, to to add to the book. So, very cool book. Uh, got a shout out from uh, from uh, from the uh, the press books people over Twitter, which was very nice uh, and uh, was sort of a nice start to things. Um, these are the uh, kind of a list of the the projects that we uh, that we awarded grant funding to. Um, so a really interesting mix of, of projects from across the university, across the disciplines. Uh, we were really happy with, you know, how many people came forward um, from all, you know, different places and with different sorts of um, use cases in mind uh, in terms of, of what they were doing. Um, now, unfortunately, we do know that, that um, uh, uh, in part due to the cyber attack, in part due to our own naivete, perhaps a couple of these uh, will not be wrapping up. Um, so, um, but still a, a very rich collection of, of, of items, I think, uh, uh, will be coming forward. And so just a couple of examples uh, of the projects are children's fiction in Spanish, which was for uh, uh, an undergraduate course uh, by Dr. Pilar Diaz. And um, at the present moment, this is being translated into uh, an English language version of this in press books. Um, and uh, your anatomy companion, which is sort of kind of an H5P enabled uh, series of, of flashcards uh, to help uh, students study uh, anatomy, which was uh, another uh, uh, idea that we thought was was pretty cool. Um, so there's been, there were a lot of people working on this project, and just in terms of my own role, it was really. A, sort of um, tapping into my work as, as, as an educator. Uh, and so um, I already had a little OER guy, but we sort of 
I carried on developing that um, in terms of uh, uh, more content on copyright and IP. Uh, we created an OER creation uh, workflow uh, for uh, you know prospective you know service in the future, as well as for our, our current early adopters. Um, so more on the uh, the online guidance side, I, I I organized a series of of workshops and cafes and a little sort of a micro sprint, um, which. Um, uh, yeah, it was an attempt to sort of engage early adopters as well as anybody else interested in, in open education, uh, which, which started off really well. Um, I put you know, the first one in November, which was I brought together four of our early adopter projects just to give us a little bit of, of an update on what they were doing. Um, this was just after the, the cyber attack hit. Um, it got a little bit you know trickier later on just because people were so distracted by by. The, the madness that that incurred, um, but still got some really great guest speakers in, and, and I'm really thankful for for all of those who get, who gave talks um, and and engaged you know people at, at the university and elsewhere who are sort of interested in in open education, um, and uh, that all sort of fed into uh, at the same time as all this is going on, I, I I started the leadership program for in Spark North America. Um, I thought it would be a good way to, to sort of deepen my knowledge of, of the space. Uh, so these these events were sort of feeding into a, a capstone project that I was doing as part of that uh, part of that course, uh, and uh, which fed into a, just kind of a curated infographic that I created as the capstone project. So some things, some activities. So it was intended as a kind of a menu of highly engaging, uh, open educated related activities, um, which curated some things that I created myself with some other uh, cool activities that uh, I knew of and then uh, did some research into and collected all into into one place. Um, that was really, um, I mean, it was a fun project to do. I got help from a from a, 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 a great um, mentor that was set up for me by the by the by the by the uh, by the by the module. So it was really uh, that was very cool. Um, so here we are, but you know, in the end, the pilot project we're nearly uh, we're nearly we're nearly at the sort of the the end date. It was scheduled to wrap up uh, at the end of December um, of this year, and um, and uh, as much as we, we we do have these sort of strategic uh, you know sort of statements, which are fantastic. Um, the 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 the, uh, the the support from on high has been a little bit uh, sort of ambivalent um, and some and there's been you know sort of a, some sort of a, sort of anxieties and doubts uh, um, from conversations that I've had from from administrators and the like about 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 open education and and they're not quite sure about it um, and um, so you know partially. Um, uh, I partially, I'm not, I'm not sure why, uh, due to that, um, in terms of ongoing, uh, commitments, um, we're, 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 uh, I don't, I don't, there isn't, there isn't an ongoing commitment for, uh, for further, uh, um, a development of the space and for, for for carrying on the service, but there's still there's some uh, very good conversations happening at, at these sort of higher levels, and uh, so I'm really crossing my fingers that something will uh, will uh, will uh, will happen um, uh, sooner rather than later. Um, so I did have the opportunity to sort of take a pitch again to 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 uh, to to, uh, to a group of senior managers and just sort of remind them of the of the you know the benefits and the opportunities of of open education, um, you know the the widening of access um, open to all everyone in the local module everywhere else uh, students don't have to scramble for for scarce resources if if they're relying on the library to, to provide things um, if that's happening. Um, uh, OER, they're customizable, um, and um, you know that's one of the great things about about having the Pressbooks software is there's a big bank of of open textbooks that are, are customizable with this with the software. Um, instructors in control of the content, in other words, um, which is pretty fab. And then open pedagogy and student engagement, uh, great opportunities here. And we've really, you know, I think our engagement with the student union or with our the student leaders in particular has just been really. Um, you know, fantastic, and um, you know, one of I think we've really strengthened our relationship with them. So, uh, just reminded them of that, and then just locally, um, 
you know, there's these sort of new um, new drivers, or they're not really that new, but but they, they, they kind of are. There's these sort of dueling crises happening at the same time. On the one hand, uh, ebook SOS, which is about, uh, you know, uh, textbook platform inflation, uh, you know, weird, uh, you know, uh, IP restrictions, uh, licensing restrictions, rather. Um, and uh, so it's it's a real you know it's a real crisis there. And so uh, how do we leverage OER to sort of fight back? And how do we avoid getting into this sort of situation uh, uh, that's being articulated by ebook SOS again? And then uh, just last week, our, our own students you know, walked out of, of of university because of of the sort of very broad uh, issue of um, affordability. So and you know one of the things that was this was a kind of a, a digital flyer that was tweeted out by the the Union of Students in Ireland. Um, and we know one of the big issues is expensive books, course materials, and hidden costs. So, um, you know, of all of, of all these sort of issues in in this list, um, you know, where where we position to do something about things um, um, in the library. So, and then just making the pitch for press books again, and just talking about um, uh, you know how you know how nice it is that it makes the makes books and i just caught a a quote from a student from from the orientation 2022 20, student feedback this year which was it'd be great to have an easy access booklet for people scared of the library and we actually you know, we actually had one of those on hand. We, we created a, a, a one of the things we created in press books at the library was a kind of an induction booklet for first year students uh, uh, called uh, in english fyi for your information uh but I recently, uh, with 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 my team, the academic skills team here, managed to and and in partnership with uh, the local translation office, Astrahan. So uh, Galway is a bilingual campus, um, English and Irish, and uh, we got it translated into Irish. So this is the Irish language version of that particular booklet, uh, which must be must be one of the you know the first uh, uh, Irish language uh, press books out there. Um, I borrowed this from from Mira, who's a member of the the NOL. Uh, so the, I mean, I, I made the pitch for the platform. Uh, I said we should, we really need this platform. We should have it. We should continue it. But we also need a, a person uh, to you know to run a service. And I just thought this slide that Mira uh, uh, from the network used at uh, the, the, this uh, event that we presented at uh, in September was just the, the kind of a, a, a perfect sort of illustration of the person that we need uh, to to be uh, to be made making the case for, for open education uh, at the university. So, um, you know, someone who's excited about the idea of open, who can get other, somebody else, others excited about it, who can address the whys, um, collect and showcasing. It's just a great list of, of, of things that, that this person should do. So, um, so, so yeah, I just, I just really like that slide. And it really resonated with, with one of the interviews that, that uh, happened for, so I was, I worked a good bit on the uh, OE Champions project uh, where we, we talked, we had interviews between librarians and champions from across Europe. Europe and um, Robert Schur was one of the interviewers and he uh, talked about speaking to uh, speak, you know, what, what do you need to do to get people, to get teachers into OE? You need to speak to their passion. You need to speak to their, their passion for teaching. And I thought that this slide really resonated to that and so I so I so I, I you know I just use this to make the case we need you know somebody who can do these things uh but also these sort of um uh, you know these more specific kinds of things like training in any software that we have like press books uh maybe run a query service um uh, someone au fait with the OER related skills, open licensing, copyright, how to revise, remix, redistribute, et cetera. Uh, so, uh, so all that, all that stuff is, 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 you know, something that someone, you know, ought to be doing. Um, so I might just, um, I'll just quickly go, you know, I'm just going to, I've got about, I've got, just got a few minutes left, so I'm just going to go quickly I'll run over this one, which is just uh, I sort of by accident wind up getting into uh, discussions about policy. Um, it's because we were we wound up having a discussion, which I think was really useful with our with our um, intellectual uh, property. Uh, no, what are they called? They're, they're called the TTO, the Technology Transfer Office. No, they're, now they're called the Innovation Office. Sorry, the, the Innovation Office. Then they include the Technology Transfer Office, and we were kind of talking to them about things. But eventually, they asked us to include this sort of um, 
this form in our workflow. And I was like, oh, what is this form? I don't want that many forms in our workflow. And I had to do, it had something to do with ownership and, and uh, commercialization or something. I was like, oh God, what is this? So I, 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 because of that, it caused a bit of anxiety in me. And I started studying our own sort of I, you know, university IP policy as well as, um, uh, you know, a document came out at the same time by our uh, the Ireland's Forum for for uh, for teaching and learning about um, enabling o OER o open and digital enabling policies. And I thought, boy, well, maybe we need one of these. And at the same time, I'd, I'd committed uh, our, our our open scholarship guy uh, Hardy had um, started a a thought leadership uh, blog basically, and uh, and I'd said, okay, I'll write I'll write something for your thought leadership blog, and so I decided that this would be a good thing to write about. So, um, so so some some blog posts on IP policy and whether we need uh, we could use a kind of a you know an OE specific policy at NUI Galway. Now, uh, it did eventually have some sort of conversations uh, indicating that. You know, we might consider having a you know a snippet in the in, in our IP policy that was specifically related to open educational resources, but um, I don't have the final word on that one. Uh, but we'll we'll you know you never know we'll see. Um, so just a few just a few uh, a few you know. Uh, uh, sort of uh, words on just the work with Spark and OL, which which many of you know about already, but it's just uh, uh, been tremendously uh, uh, you know helpful uh, and and you know a, a great experience working on these activities, including OE Champions, uh, the Learning Path, um, which you know I worked on with with. Uh, with uh, uh, with uh, Celine Penyon and uh, Marta Bastillo and uh, Roberta DeFranco. And then we had the opportunity to present those at a, at, in a couple of places already. And that's been just fab. And I, I did I did a couple of OE drops, uh, uh, which, which, which was quick and fun. And now I'm doing this practitioner in the spotlight. So, uh, and, uh, so um, I, I like to think I've been pretty active and it's been really, it's been really great. Um, and, um, and what I've really enjoyed about it is the, the sort of commitment to capacity development among librarians like we're all learning together um like collegiality camaraderie and community which uh, you know so much of that is due to down to paola and her amazing work uh, as our community manager uh and then the commitment to five r's and the sort of uh, the sort of making sure that we're uh you know doing things right with the licensing uh but also in terms of the technology and, and the way that we're doing things that people are able to reuse and revise and remix and do all those good things with whatever it is that we're we're coming out with so just, I guess a few words just on the future, what's coming up um, you know, with the pilot project, uh, the, the, the idea is to launch in 2023, um, you know, certainly launch some of the projects themselves. Uh, it'd be great if we could actually be launching a service as well uh, with, with, with a good platform and maybe somebody in place there to, uh, to actually be, to be running the service. Um, so so uh, I've been tasked with a bit of party planning already, which isn't my strong suit, but uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how I do there. Um, and then as well, just in terms of future projects coming up or around the institution, this is one that I know is coming up. Um, it's uh, from an EU Horizon grant uh, called Remediating the Early Book Past and Futures MSCA Doctoral Network. The project coordinators are Catherine Emerson and Lindsay Reed. Um, so it's a network of PhD students will be located at the six universities that are, that are here on the screen, including at uh, University of Galway. It's not all about open education, but two of the uh, PhDs are practice-based PhDs that are focused on the creation of OER. And in the meantime, all of the 13 PhDs that are, that are being funded through the project will be creating uh, and OER, even if it's just, it's kind of a, a smaller part of their overall project. So I've, I've committed to sort of doing the, helping with the training and, and again, that capacity development with these PhD students before they go off and, and create these uh, OER. So, um, uh, and you know, the, some of the good news is that those, those two practice-based OER creation PhDs, uh, one of the qualifying master's degrees is the uh, MLS degree. So uh, we might have some OER creating librarians uh, coming to the institution, which would be pretty cool. Uh, I'm delivering a workshop just on, on the basics of OER, uh, 50 November, uh, and that's an in-person one. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to that, just carrying on um, teaching people about OER and uh, and uh, and at, at NOL, you know, who knows what I'll do? Maybe I'll do some more OE drops. And uh, you know, this this group on OE and open scholarships sounds pretty interesting. Maybe I'll drop into that sometime sometime soon. So um, 
so that's it that's it for me for me talking i guess i'll ask if uh, anybody there has any has any questions for me thank you so much chris for uh, leading us through your uh, rich uh, open education uh, activities you really did an amazing job for your university and also for our annual uh, group of course <laughs> yeah I was wondering, could, could you tell us some more about um, textbooks, the, the software you use for your open textbooks? Can, can you make interactive textbooks with this software? Or? Yeah, you can. So um, it uh, it has um, built into it is is um, is H five P. So you can do um, uh, so H five P is a software where you make interactive activities. Um, so like you know you can make multiple choice quizzes. You can make um, uh, you, you, there's all kinds of activities. There's a good, sort of a big menu of of activities that you can do. So that's sort of included in the subscription. Um, so there's that sort of level of of interactivity. And it's easy to also to embed sort of videos and and that kind of material as well. Okay, because we're um, uh, looking for um, good software to use, but so maybe Pressbooks uh, would be a good candidate. It's 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 certainly worth looking into. Um, you know, our experience of it has been pretty good, um, and uh, in terms of that interactivity, that possibility is there. But then, of course, you can you can have H five P as a kind of a standalone as well. Like you don't that doesn't need to be part of a Pressbook subscription. You can have H five P. That's it's its own sort of thing, um, and um, and um, uh, that, which is like super. You know, it's it's a great it's a great resource as well. Okay, yes, thank you. And are you planning to do something this week? Because it's open access uh, week, I, I just remembered. <laughs> I, I just remembered as well. I was actually just having coffee. We're we're, we're having a, a a UNESCO chair, and uh, her name is uh, Virginia. She's from Uruguay, and she and uh, and I was talking to her and and her her host uh, here, and they were like, "Oh, it's Open Access Week. What are you guys doing?" And I was like, "Oh God, I don't know. I sort of forgot. I'm really I I, I feel bad about that." But um, so from <laughs> open from open from the open education standpoint, I'm afraid not. <laughs> the happy open access week yeah yeah because we have an open education week i think in march or something um yes e exactly um so so you know that to look forward to i'll definitely have my eye on that as well and uh, paula just asked whether it's virginia road death yes that's exactly it yes um that's exactly i guess you guys know each other yes we know each other and she's great she's been doing amazing job so it's a uh, good uh, good to know that uh, pathways are crossing also in this way uh, she's yeah. one of the champions of open education in south america actually I, I, since I, my I... microphone is open please i have out of curiosity <laughs> Uh, you just shared that, that uh, you created uh, a team, the, the first uh, Irish uh, open textbook. I, want, I, don't I, know if, I don't know if it's the first, but it must be one of the okay. first. I'm sure it must be one of the first. But anyway, I was wondering if you or also Marta or Celine, given you are all, uh, you all moved uh, to Ireland from different countries, if you managed to learn a little bit of Irish too, just out of curiosity. I, I I'm I I, sh I should know some because actually Galway has a sort of a special dispensation uh, as um, to to sort of encourage and maintain the the, the Irish language. Um, it's actually part of its mandate, and uh, and because we're out west and there's a lot of Gael talked around us, so Gael talked is the Irish speaking regions of Ireland. Um, and you know, despite participating in the translation of this book, and despite actually being on the Irish language uh, uh, strategic group here in the library, I, I have virtually no Irish uh, <laughs> at all, and it's 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 getting quite embarrassing. But uh, so hopefully in the future, um, it's 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 um, my children who are in primary school here learn Irish. Okay. And um, and from their school books, um, I can tell that it's not the easiest language to learn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one of these days, I will I will get around to taking a stab. This resonates with all the. I don't know uh, what I, I don't know what the Irish. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. I don't Thank know what the. Here, Paola. Yeah. 
I don't know what the what the supports for that are like at your institution, Marta. Are there are there is there a, a language um, learning? Uh, yes, we we yeah. have uh, extracurricular classes. We have a department of Irish, obviously, and the National Folklore Collection is part of the UCD library, where and we have tons of archival material uh, by Irish speakers that was collected from the early part of the 20th century so yeah i should know a lot more than i do <laughs> but it's not an easy language to learn and and i talk about uh, about it as someone who has a little bit of knowledge of another language that's pretty difficult to learn which is basque oh, yeah. from the north of spain and you know i'm a little bit of a basque speaker and my irish is absolutely appalling <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, I think, as far as I can tell, probably the only thing that I can say properly is thank you, which is Garad Mahagat. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> that's what we done. No, uh, but it is interesting for me to, to ask you about this because we've been discussing a lot around languages uh, in relation to the, the NOL toolkit. And if we want to be as inclusive as possible, of course, we will continue talking about. Uh, different language and also local languages and the Irish mm -hmm. is not yet in our picture so who knows <laughs> maybe, maybe that's day. something we need to consider <laughs> yeah one day <laughs> we'll get it in there one day we will yeah and also Basque and also and Basque, Basque yeah yes. sure <laughs> I can actually probably get a little bit more help yeah. with that than with Irish <laughs> so and I'm well, just can, completing I... Catalan those days because we received it. Uh, so I'm just yeah, finalizing the files. So we are going to have Catalan and uh, Kazakh also by the end of the week. Chris, a lot of perspective Amazing. in your talk. Um, thank you for, for sharing uh, with us your experience and also uh, your insights on uh, some of the challenges that uh, uh, that you encountered, which is the, the the biggest one? I mean, which is the the, the one thing that you think made uh, your life much more difficult uh, in relation to open education so far, if any? Yeah, I, I mean, there, there, there. I mean, there are a lot of challenges. I, 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 I hate to always be bringing sort of this up, but honestly, the. the the impact of the cyber attack from last year made everything it just it just changed everything um from in terms of getting a clear sense of what the real uh, barriers were um but um but certainly um you know one thing that 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 was very difficult um i mean it's it's it's, it's part part of it is just sort of um internal uh, issues with uh, it's very difficult to spend money. In fact, that's it's it's it just takes a really really long time to uh, to uh, to get things done. And so when you have a, a project with a timeline like this one, it's like two years, um, and then you you're, you you have certain um, targets that you're trying to reach, uh, and 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 when it, it just takes a very long time for, for you know for the money to get around to where it needs to go, and uh, that that was a big one. But then that gotten again that that was something that was magnified you know two or three or four times by the fact that the cyber attack happened and all of those you know our, our internal uh spending mechanism was shut down and in fact for some reason for some for some it seemed for months um so it was um you know but there's i mean there's plenty there's plenty of, of, of challenges um I, and I, I think a certain amount of it is is um uh, some of it is simply just a sort of a lack of knowledge of what open education is, and then also a clear idea of what it is vis-a-vis um, -vis open scholarship, because I think that that was, was one thing that we ran into is that people thought they were sort of synonyms for one another, and that there was no sort of difference between open scholarship and open education. Uh, and then when they sort of realized what it was, they were like, oh, God, I'm not, I'm not too sure about that. Boy, that sounds really, sounds a little scary, you know. Um, so, uh, so that was kind of another one. Chris, can I just ask you, because I always hear about, the, um, you know, people applying for li a little funding for this and that. How did you come about applying for that funding? 
did you hear about it from within the university or how was that because i always think that's where it, where it starts once you get the funding then you can get things done yeah i mean I, I'll, I'll credit on that one i think to the to the project manager who was killian joy who's the digital uh -huh, developer okay. here um and he because i was sort of there i was like i've been sort of you know working a little bit with oer and doing these things like having a guide and working with my own practice and things which are really important but i was like okay what's next what do we need now we need somebody <laughs> and i had i didn't really know how to get it uh but the student project fund does has has done a call for for um you know does uh you know, they, they 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 fund these kinds of projects on a yearly basis so it was mm -hmm. just a matter of like looking at it and then being like okay how do we how do we put together a proposal that will appeal to um to the students to the students uh and uh, mm -hmm. but then whatever the, you know the mandate of the student project fund and i think and i think at that but i think you know part of that was having made these really good inroads with the student leadership at the time because they were mm -hmm. really like talking about it themselves about how important this was um so there was a uh, kind of um you know they were they were open to the suggestion um mm -hmm. and uh, and and sort of agitating for it themselves um so i think that probably helped the proposal but killian he was just like i was sort of hesitant i was like oh i don't know this seems like this seems like a a big jump do we really want to do this but he's like well look like we'll just go get some money and then he like went out and got some money it was it was amazing um finessa i think yeah great so chris thanks so much uh for that overview and you have been one of the most active members of nol and i really really hope that so the people deciding now for Galway, whether you need to have that one person, dedicated person, which I think is a really important um, uh, way to move uh, uh, towards to, um, you know, um, I hope that all the experience um, that you've brought and, and, you know, all this activity that that will help them make more commitments um i was curious uh whether the library is also part of that decision making group so you have who you have steered and i know with hardy you you've both been really pushing this forward but when it comes to now committing going forward is the library part of that conversation or not or and who is part of that conversation do you know um, I have vague ideas, <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, the library is part of that conversation, and uh, you know, a part of it is whether, um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a, it's not an easy question. Like, where does this person, where should this person be, um, and um, and uh, and if it's in the library, where within the library should it be? Um, mm -hmm. Should it be on the collection side of things? Should it be on the teaching and learning side of things? Um, uh where where would this person go um so yes i the, the library is a, is a part of 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 those discussions um i i don't know i don't have a clear sense of uh, you know how much buy-in there is at the sort of the high 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 up level that the for for an actual for a person to be to be in this space oh i do keep my fingers crossed because you put so much into it <laughs> it would be a real shame for it to, you know, dry up after the end of the student project. Uh, it would be a shame. It would be. A Maybe shame. you I, need I, to share this presentation with a couple of them because it really does show your story. Yeah, and and um, yeah, I really do think that this would. Uh, they don't realise how much uh, goes into into this, and it wasn't just talking. You were really doing a lot. Yeah. So you yeah, have a yeah. much richer understanding of what it means um, to be involved and to move this forward. And yeah, so I do keep my fingers really uh, crossed for, for you and Galway. I appreciate that. I do. And I, I've certainly got mine crossed as well. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and continuing to make the argument, I am. I'm, I'm not just sort of waiting. <clears throat> uh, Mira. Yes, thank you, Chris. Thank you so much for this inspiring story. And I think you are that enthusiast from the picture, from the slide. <laughs> that is you, basically. That's so the thanks. Microphone. Yeah, exactly. Well, the rock star. <laughs> thanks a lot for sharing with us. Um, and you also brought along so many practical examples, especially the ones concerning students and student involvement. 
what would be your advice uh, for us, for those who are still to go through this journey of involving the students? Because I, I feel like this is the part where we're still lacking, at least at my institution. What would be your best um, tips, best advice for this? Well, I, 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 I mean, in terms of practicalities, it's a, it's a little tricky because we were quite lucky um, when, in particular, those first two uh, people came came and and were interested in it. So, I mean, it's 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 about figuring out, you know, it's it's just about going. I think Hardy did a great job of going out and just finding people who were who were excited about open education. And it turned out that some of those people actually happen to be the student leaders um so when you actually have student leaders who are there and who are excited about it get in and 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 you know like start talking to them as as soon as you can and then i think it was a really good idea for us to have like on the project team as well as the project board um the 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 su um uh, VP education was there on both of those parts of the project. And so, you know, there's this thing with the with the student leadership where they're only around for a year, right? And they 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 come in with sort of different priorities and, and whatnot. So, but we we had them like tied to the project. Um, so whether or not they were that interested or not at the outset, um, you know, they we had a, like a meeting uh, embedded with them and then they came to subsequent meetings and, and whatever. So, so even if it wasn't sort of top of mind for their particular agendas, um, they at least learned about it over the course of the year and they did engage with us like really well um uh no matter who it was uh and then actually you like Claude McGivern for last year uh, went on to the national student leadership so you know somebody who didn't really know about open education I would say at the, at the beginning um now knows much more about it and has gone up to that sort of national level of student leadership so that's that's another kind of thing that was good but we're I mean we're sort of like it's 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 an issue it's it's an issue that's that's sort of coming up in a sort of a political way amongst the students and they're frustrated with costs of everything um and it's and and this is coming up uh, as well so it's just sort of 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 you know there and, and engaging with them on their terms about about these kinds of things yeah so in this way the the ebook sauce campaign sort of helps yes <laughs> well the silver lining of such a bad situation of course yeah and, and to, just i mean they're they're really it's actually i mean i've i've, I've I call them two crises, but in fact, it's the same crisis. You know, it's it's if we're not able to buy the eBooks, then that means that they're they're you know it's more likely that they have they're going to have to foot the bill. So um, it's really it's you know the the eBook crisis. I mean, you know, one thing about it is sometimes it it might seem like a library thing, but in fact, it's it's also a student affordability thing. Right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Any other been... question? Thanks for that comment, Marta. Yeah, they've been, um, that's exactly it. I mean, the university leadership does take notice. Like when they get excited about something, they, they do pay attention. And that's one of the reasons why it, that like the Joe, Joe came in and was really excited this year. And that's one of the reasons why I know that there's conversations happening up, up the ladder. <clears throat> Yeah, it's also in our institution when students ask for it, the board will listen more than if the library asks for something. <laughs> so it's it's important to uh, group to inform and uh, uh, to stimulate uh, the discussion with, I think. So I totally agree. For sure. And also, whichever work we do in relation to higher education as them as our final target group. So <laughs> why not to talk with them directly and to get them involved? And uh, I think that uh, moving forward, uh, addressing our attention more and more to students might be even more helpful because uh, it's a way, and please correct me if I'm wrong, please, uh, according to your experience, but in mine, when you involve students directly, not only they have, honestly, open minds already, uh, which makes uh, our life easier, but also they are interested in knowing more about open education. So if we start early with them and uh, we help them create the right mindset, then they will become uh, lecturers or teachers or whatever they do in their life, uh, their attitude would be closer to opening their contents and their outputs, right? So they might be better citizens anyway. Yep, 
one hundred percent. Couldn't have set it up better myself. Couldn't possibly. <laughs> Any other question for Chris? It doesn't seem so. So, Chris, thank you again, and I will let uh, Monique close. <laughs> Thanks for this opportunity. Thanks so much. Yes, uh, and thanks for your inspiring talk and, and many perspectives and, and, and your great work. We uh, really, really uh, loved to have you here today in the Open Access Week, <laughs> which we won't mention again. <laughs> you forgot. Yeah, but thank you. Yeah, uh, I have a lot to talk about, uh, to, to think about now. Yes, thanks to you. My pleasure. Thanks so much.